Now we're here in uh, the eastern part of Holland, the higher parts of uh, Holland. We designed uh, an eco duct. It's Dutch for wildlife crossing. We um, used several uh, principles here, which we also uh, used in Veil. There is hardly any detail on the on the structure because it's all integrated in the in the shape, one shape, one form. We tried to make one clear span without any supports in the middle. So it's a, uh, for the traffic going by, it's a very welcoming gesture. And the second thing is the curved uh, cross section, which uh, will contain uh, the landscape where the animals will cross. And uh, these two principles you also see in Veil, two perpendicular arcs combined form uh, the basis of this bridge. You can think of a, 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 a funnel or an arc, and that's uh, uh, exactly the right shape for, for, uh, to, to guide those animals uh, over the crossing. So we make two pools and, uh, and a small creek that will attract the animals. Uh, we, we use the same soil, we use the same um, vegetation as, uh, as uh, you will uh, see in the uh, environment. If you didn't know it, you wouldn't see the difference between uh, the vegetation on the, on the slopes, on both slopes, and uh, the crossing itself. What struck us after uh, a site visit was the size, the scale of the landscape. It's uh, of a huge scale, and we wanted to maintain this scale building, uh, building the bridge. So what we, uh, the main organizing principle of this, this structure is that we have we have a large arc that is crossing the road. The massive scale of the landscape needs a large gesture to take uh, the overall uh, landscape with you under, uh, underneath the structure. So it's a large arc with a large height. Um, <clears throat> the other bow in the, in the opposite uh, direction, uh, it's the containing arc. So uh, because of this uh, structure, the animals are protected from noise, but also the, the lights from the cars. So this, this curve it contains uh, the landscape for the animals. The visual continuity is important, not only from um, a perspective of um, uh, landscape architecture, because it's, it's quite nice to see a landscape going over the crossing, but it's also very important for the animals because uh, uh, animals are quite conservative uh, and will uh, choose always the, the environment and uh, the habitat they are used to. So some are predators and the other are uh, grass-eating animals, so you have to uh, choose one which you use as a target species, and we propose to choose the elk. Uh, important is to choose for, for a species like uh, elk because we know it's shy, so we have to um, be very careful with uh, recreation. We propose to have one small uh, lookout in which people can, uh, can uh, look at, uh, at the animals. What we try to avoid is uh, making uh, parking facilities nearby. Uh, we uh, propose to use existing parking facilities. The visitor center is integrated in the foundation of the, of the ARC structure. So you can go with, uh, you rent a bike or you rent a, a Segway or an, another electric vehicle and you can go to, uh, to the wildlife crossing and you go inside and you can see, uh, well, uh, an exhibition about all the animals that cross. There are several um, webcams uh, planned on the, on the crossing. And uh, for the people who are very patient, you can go up uh, and there is this little watchtower you can go up and, well, you have to wait and sit for a, uh, quite a while and then maybe your favorite animal uh, will drop by. So we have seen it in the landscape uh, design where the, the curves and arcs are, are, are very important in organizing uh, uh, the views and, and, and the overall uh, structure of the design. But also in the architectural uh, design, and even in the, in the, in the structural design, uh, curves and translated into arcs are, are very important.
It's a, it's a new one. It's good. And they're fresh. Well, this is a Pringle, as everybody knows. And in the Pringle, you can see the, the shape of the high par, the principle. Uh, high par means uh, hyperbolic uh, paraboloid, and it means that the surface of the shell is curved in two ways. The advantage of the high par construction is that the forces put onto the high par orthogonally are transformed only into membrane forces. That means that you can uh, build uh, constructions with very thin shells and with a minimal of material and uh, the stresses are uh, reduced to a minimum that can be optimized by uh, adapting the shape of the, of the shell. In the end, a series of crossings has to be uh, realized all the way from the northern Rockies from Canada all the way south to, uh, to, the, to the southern uh, Rockies. So we, with our uh, design, we try to make an adaptable design that you can easily alter to all these different uh, slopes and, and, and site conditions. Instead of making a drawing, you write a script. And then the script generates the form. So the topology of the site will be translated into, uh, into the shape. Uh, what we do is enter certain points from the landscape. So when we, when we have a site where it's going to be built, we just uh, fill in the lines of altitude and certain points where we want the, the arc to start and then the script generates the form and you can change width, length or the way it's uh, curved. So every shape will be different. Every side will have its own shape. Because it's a cable structure, uh, we can uh, easily, uh, uh, we can use the data from the computer model, we can use it to alter the cable network. So all the knots of the cables will have different positions. And by altering these positions, the shape of the overall network uh, will, um, will change. So you can reuse the cable network, and you can uh, uh, with, uh, even think of reusing the, uh, the, the geotextile. So this is a physical model of the cable structure we might use for the flexible formwork. We like to build these physical models just to get an idea how things work with moving these knots, how can you alter the geometry. But in the end it will be a computer model and everything will be generated digitally and uh, you know, for the file to factory, file to site pr uh, process of course you want everything to be digital. When you pass by on the I-70, the, the first things you will see is the, uh, the excavation works, then the application of uh, concrete to build the, the basements. And uh, later on in the process, we will put up the steel structures, and then we will attach the steel cable grid to the basement and to the, steel, the temporary steel structures. And after the, the cable grid, we can put on the geofabric formworks, and then with the technique of uh, shotcrete, we can put, apply the, the first layer of concrete. Uh, we try to reduce the cost as much as possible. That means that we will try to reuse all elements of the temporary structure uh, uh, for next uh, wildlife crossings to be built. And that means that we aim to um, apply structures and materials that can be adjusted uh, to the right proportions for the, the, the fabrication of the wildlife crossing. The solution we propose, it's uh, on, uh, up until a certain extent, it's proven technology, but it's on a new scale. So uh, fabric formwork, we have seen it before, but we never seen it on this scale. Cable structures, we have seen it before and even on a larger scale than this, but combined all these uh, the fabric formwork, uh, the cable uh, structures and so on, 
it's combined into a new uh, context. So that's in, in, in this way it's, uh, it's innovative. The innovation will be the combination of it all and to make a temporary uh, steel structure that supports cable structure, a cable grid and uh, pretensioned and uh, on top of the cable grid uh, geofabric uh, formwork and then the technique of uh, applying uh, concrete in the form of shotcrete in different layers. I think that is very new. Uh, the appealing thing of a competition is that you can uh, that you can think beyond your borders. We think integrated design will work on a landscape scale, on an architectural scale in the sense of proportion and, and form, but it also works on a uh, structural level and also uh, on a uh, constructability uh, uh, level. In this project we took a, a, a more radical approach. No concessions from planning up until production, it's one, uh, one integrated uh, solution.